Okay. I mean, well, <clears throat> as you spoke of, we've been having an interesting, an interesting voyage here. We are about 11,011 ,011 miles away from Vero right now. It would take 15 hours to get home. <laughs> Uh, but then again, we're home right now. <clears throat> uh, let me just pray, and uh, we'll see how things go here. Um, I wasn't preparing for it, but then I realized, you know, people don't know blow by blow in a sense, not blow by blow, but um, the blessings that we get on the road like this are different from back home. And so we have to be sustained. We have to be kept safe. We have to pray for the lead Melakim to go before us to, uh, to these all, all of these um, appointments that we get, that, that come to us. So Father Yahweh, I pray that you will uh, anoint my tongue and make this uh, talk a blessing to someone, to people that are listening, and <clears throat> that we can, we can bless you and see how you have arranged this whole trip by your providence and by your will. And we... We ask for our continued safety and for the safety and blessing of the people that we meet and and come in contact with in Yeshua's name. Amen. <clears throat> so when we left, we went uh, we went right to Daniel's place, and it was interesting there. We had a I guess we had a service there also, didn't we? Yeah, we had a service there. Of course. Oh yes, Amanda and Michael. We had a we had a great time with them. Um, the to they had their daughter there with them. Yes, they did. It seems so long ago. <laughs> um, and we were able to bless them. And they blessed us too. Uh, hearing what they're going through and, and their move and everything uh, was, quite, was quite well, was quite good. <clears throat> uh, we went to, and we went to Daniel and had the meeting there. And then we went out to eat. And that was quite, uh, well, we went we went to one of the last Chinese buffets that I have on my list. And so then we were talking and a young man, a gentleman from with his wife across the way, seemed to know something, be a warm stone. And it turned out that Daniel knew him from a fellowship they would go into before. So we had a long, we had a conversation with him. And so that was good because it, it realigned him up with Daniel and Governor. And so the contact later on, they were going to call. Uh, he's difficult. He has a difficult time, but um, you know he seems to have a have a mission, has a testimony. That's for sure. So we we had that appointment. <clears throat> then we came up to Knoxville, and we had a, a fantastic time there. It was a good rest rest time. We went to see um, the went through a lot of mountains. We went to a park that we had there and that was a great time of seeing nature and different things. Um, we didn't minister to anybody. We, 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 I don't remember ministering to people directly uh, like we've had the last couple of days or even at um, Daniel's place. From there, we went to uh, Gina and Jason. Now this is Jackson's daughter who he hasn't, uh, well, she did, her and her husband did come down to Vero and we had a, a good time with them. We went there and uh, Gina more or less opened up to some of us, uh, to us, and to me also. And so they're having a very, they're having a difficult time with their life. But it, it opened up again, it was a, an appointment for Jackson to uh, again um, be with his family, to open up uh, old ties, good ties, and uh, to see where, and his son also was there. So that was a good appointment and he had a great time with his son relating and different things. He helped us out with the car a little bit, pulling, pulling different dents out. The car has been, um, has been great all this time. So we appreciate your prayers in that. Uh, he's a body man. So he was able to kind of jostle the front end around. I don't know if some of you have seen the car. It's, it looks in rough shape and uh, <clears throat> driving of it has been, um, an interesting time, put it that way. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> here at Brenda and Fred's house, like he said, we have um, 
we've been here. It's been a great time of resting and, and relaxing. They had some people over, Sharon and Sherry uh, came over yesterday and we had a time of, of prophetic utterance, I would imagine, uh, from, from them. And they have some needs physically and we prayed for them. I believe, um, I believe we have that up in the recording so you can listen to that if you'd like. So it was, <clears throat> and ministering to here with Brenda and Fred has been getting to know as them has been fantastic. Uh, they are awesome people. And they're about to move themselves to a new adventure in South Carolina. So uh, every it be, people seem to be in flux. Um, moving on to other ventures. <clears throat> they have a nice little cafe across the street. I went there the other day with um, just to, you know, get online and everything, just hanging out with a cup of coffee. And it, interesting, the young man gave me a free cup of coffee. I didn't expect it. I didn't know what was going on. I was wearing my Zeet seats at the time. And so it really seemed kind of strange, that kind of contact. But like I said last night to people, when you anticipate these meetings, these divine appointments, when you pray at the opening of the day to minister to somebody that can, you can share your faith and share the hope you have, in Yeshua. Things happen. Anticipate them to happen. And with expectation almost. A righteous expectation of ministering to somebody. Being um, excited on how Yahweh is going to work it out so that you can share with someone. It, it might be just a simple thing, but it can develop into more. And we went back there just a while ago after the, uh, the uh, 11 o'clock meeting and had a cup of coffee. And again, this young man gave us both a free cup of coffee. And uh, we began talking and everything and finding out he, 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 he wished us a Shabbat Shalom as we walked, as I walked in. And so um, it was, <clears throat> you know, okay, all right. Do you, have, do you know what this is? He says, I, I respect the old ways. And... Uh, <clears throat> We found out that he goes to a local church. He does, he was working on Shabbat, of course, but uh, it was, um, we started talking and he, he knows about these things. We don't, don't know yet how deep he's gone into it, but it's just another warm stone that we pray that we run into these people and we can see their, we can see their listening ear as sometimes as we speak, as Jackson and I speak about some of these things, um, then we can notice that people are listening, you know, and, and the spirit there also that, that reflects upon people. And then Jackson caught a, a woman's tattoo that was taking, I guess it was taking our check for it. And uh, she noticed a Lamed, the, the, um, the letter, a tattooed on her arm. You didn't see the rest of it. He asked her about it. He says, it's, I guess he talked to in the preamble here. Uh, it was the word for Shalom. Now, we don't know uh, what her connection is. There was no time to get involved with that. But then I talked talk to the waiter over there who had given us the coffee, and we talked a little bit. And he goes to a Christian church down the street here ways. And so his name is Jared. So I ask you to, especially in the morning, just um, pray that we have another divine appointment, that perhaps there are more warm stones in that con congregation. Not everybody can, you know, the Father puts people in churches to get them into that way, get them into the scripture, or get them out of the world into some addiction, perhaps. But then in time, the Spirit brings um, someone like us, someone like Brenda to this area, and Fred, that can, can, can do be the, not the pioneer, but the settlers into someone's spirit and help them bring them along, bring them along. Um, so we're gonna, I'm going to go tomorrow. And... Um, and see what's there. So just be praying for that as we, um, as we go on our trip, that we have many divine appointments uh, uh, this, during this vacation. Like I say, we're a thousand miles from home. We might as well make the best of it, you know? Um, and <clears throat> we have been spoken to many times about, uh, I don't know if you know Frank Houts. He's a, uh, a scholar Hebrew roots teacher in Kentucky that I actually, I personally have um, listened to him before, before I met Jackson, before I was in the Ahad. And he's the one that I would get the books from. And exactly, exactly. Um, 
There was a comment there when the teacher, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And even in my own life, um, when, I'm, when I was ready, when the spirit gave me hunger, I reached out to, to different people. Sometimes he brings them to you. Sometimes it's a supernatural meeting. Frank has a school that he bought from the county <clears throat> in Winchester, Kentucky. And it's been one of our, my desires to go see him. In years past, I've been buying books from him before I knew Jackson. And other people within the Ahad have says, you know, Jackson and him need to get together because it's similar similar visions about education, about educating people on those those writings. So we made time to go down. It was about 158 miles from here. And we left <laughs> early in the morning. Anyway, <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, you know, we got, we got a vision, got a uh, explanation of what his vision is. And we were able to share about the Ahad a little bit. But it is definitely a worthwhile work that he's doing there. Uh, perhaps Perhaps we have we have an interview that we did with him, and perhaps that will be online. I believe it is it already online. Yeah. With um, it's on YouTube with um, with Frank Houts. I'm I've I've called him Bubba in the past because like he has a a beard, just no mustache, and here's just like that, and he wears coveralls a lot, of, overalls a lot of times. So I got I gave him the name Bubba, Bubba Frank. <clears throat> but <clears throat> it's not unprecedented to what we've done. Listen to, remember um, <clears throat> when Kifa, when Kifa was uh, on the journey, there were other people from the ship. You had uh, Clement, you had, um, you had uh, the brothers, Aquila and Priscilla. Was it Faustinis? Anyway, his brothers, and they went ashore to see some monument of whatever it was. And Kifa stood back, sat back at the boat. He's probably, might have been too tired or uh, weary to go with these kids going out there and see the sights. And what happened was he found Faustinius, if you've read the Nazarene Acts, and this turned out to be Clement's father and then the twins' father. So by just Clement, um, Kepha being there, and they prayed, before, prayed as a group before they went into town, and um, <clears throat> Faustinius came up and questioned Kepha. And through that meeting, a whole new gambit, a whole new area, of um of relationship was born so you never know who's watching you you never know who's uh going to look see what's on your belt clips and as i said jared saw my zit seats and that's how we've come into this uh arrangement to go meet him further <clears throat> so it pays to do these things <clears throat> to speak with those people that you're with about spiritual things about your life and i've always said a, person's, a person can witness just by an overflow of your spirit. And so with things that you discuss, things that you do, just in your normal life, flow out of you to someone else that's watching you that you don't know about. And so they might need, they might need prayer and see you as a spiritual person and ask you to pray for them. Be ready um, in and out of season to do these things because this is why we're here. We're not here just to read a bunch of books and translate a bunch of, bunch of words, and those things are necessary, but we're here to bring the people's, the, how, how do we go it? what do we call it, the um, amel, what? Amelioration. Amelioration. Uh, now, what's your, what's your understanding of that? <clears throat> this is Brenda, Brenda uh, Westweld, and... Um, Okay, so prove or make better of the earth, of creation, yes. basically. So what did you take out of that? What's, fill that out a little bit. What do you mean? Oh, well, this is, this is pretty much me because I just got my dad and I and Jackson were talking, but I believe that, that God, Elohim, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Trying to shave, gets, is, requ is requiring us to be very much a part of that, and that's really hit me the other night when I just heard that. Ah, come close, they can't hear you. I'm sorry. I asked him the two things that we ought to be busy doing. He said to find the elect and to help ameliorate the earth. And that was a new thought for me. So I I looked it up and I spent a lot of time talking it because I felt like the father took especially the second one and just really emphasized it 
like even after Jackson went to bed and or came upstairs, I don't think he goes to bed. <laughs> I don't think he sleeps. But anyway, um, just really impressed upon me that I'm supposed to be part of that and I don't know how to do it. So that's my next thing is to just seek his guidance on that. Okay, there you go. <clears throat> Thank you. And this is what we're trying to do, the amelioration, the raising, and we've talked about this in the Ahad before, the frequency of, of our lives, of our spirit, to raise above where we've been through this understanding uh, of the kingdom and to be uh, um, an active part in bringing that kingdom of Elohim to the earth, raising the frequency of people that we meet. Um, <clears throat> The, the lower the frequency, the more humdrum you are, in a sense. So learning these things and anticipating things from the spiritual realm to come here to bring about the amelioration, the raising of the frequency of all of creation. Now, that's just not, not just <clears throat> um, witnessing to somebody and getting them saved. You know, what it is, is everything. It's the environment. It's the homeopathic. It's the therapeutic, as we understand those people to be. Um, during the Isian times. It's all of that. It's understanding languages. With Frank, we talked about the paradigms. <clears throat> we have people that don't understand us, that have diff way different point of views. What it is, is that we don't understand. We can't get into their shoes, in a sense. So when you, when you talk to somebody, learn who they are. Learn where they're at. If you meet someone that um, is a waiter, or a waitress, learn what, remember what it is to um, be in that realm and see if, if they're not, if they don't have anything of Elohim in their lives, put your, remember what it was like when you were in that position and bring them along in the spirit. Look, reach down and listen to the Ruach and bring them to the next step to raise their temperature just a little bit to think about the kingdom of Elohim. <clears throat> and as you as you develop these gifts, as you develop to learn, to anticipate uh, these things happening in your life as supernaturally, I think Sid Roth talks about the expect the supernatural. And so, you know, especially last night when we had a prayer time, we're anointing of oil for healing. We've got some really definite uh, needs in this community here uh, and with this in the area of, of healing, of genuine physical healing and to raise their temperature, to give them outlets to speak and to, uh, to their community, to their friends and whoever they are. Make new friends in the faith. <clears throat> so this is, I won't go into the challenge right now, but it is. It is a challenge to step out of yourself, to rely upon the supernatural, to expect these things, the anticipation of the coming of the kingdom. May this day I have, have a part in bringing the kingdom to my sphere of influence today and tomorrow and every morning say that <clears throat> anticipate these appointments to come because they will if you ask if you're not going to ask he's not going to go out of his way because he's going to realize that you're just going to about your day but anticipate that you will have what you asked for those divine appointments to speak to someone um and what in the past we've called it warm stones people that are you know, they don't have a full understanding of, of this walk, but there's just an inkling, just, just a small inkling of it, and just develop that like a small plant, like a, like a puppy that you have to train in those realms. Um, <clears throat> first, you have to potty train. But let's go, that, not that thought. <clears throat> so this is what the trip has been about. This is what the trip has been about, is to looking for those warm stones and to re-ignite re, um, some fires in some. And uh, it, uh, the trip is not over yet. Uh, so it's, this is what I want to leave with you. These trips to me are um, quite fulfilling. As some of you know me, I've been on a few of these trips. And you look for opportunities that are laid out before you, that the Melakim have set in a sense, um, not potholes, but opportunities for blessing that you'll be able to walk into. <clears throat> I equate it to, in my understanding of the early lives of Shua, Yahshua, between 12 to his ministry, I believe he traveled throughout the world. Now, 
if you were the son of Elohim and you had what from 12 to 30 almost 20 years to do whatever you know and then you knew what your ministry is going to be I would go all over the world and set up people cultures to receive my apostles to see the teaching as they come in that um, <clears throat> that would make it so easy for those cultures to receive the good news before he, the apostles actually went there. So this is what I believe the angels are doing as we're moving around these, the country, is setting those places that we're going to visit, opportunities to minister, opportunities that we just walk into. And if we listen to the Spirit, we can just fulfill what the, um, what the pre-work has already done. So this day, when you go about your lives in your home, pray for these, these opportunities that have been laid out before you to minister, <clears throat> even at the workplace, go shopping, whatever, that, that they're there. You've just got to anticipate and be sensitive to them. And no telling where we can go from here. So I ask you to share, be ready to share the hope and the faith that you have in Yeshua to bring the kingdom to people that you know, your family, if there is an opportunity in that direction. Uh, and it's, the thing of it is, is that what you have inside, you, what comes out is an overflow of you. So if you're not filled up with the blessings and with the praise and thinking in that direction, it's not going to come out of you. You need to fill yourself up. It's like a, it's like a vessel that is so full that it can't help but spill all over the place. You know, and we don't need bounty to clean it up. We just need warm stones to soak it up. And then we go from there. We, uh, we pray for people to either get some other training or bringing a community within, your, within the area. So this is what it's, it's been like on this trip. We have many warm stones that we've been con connecting with and creating new contacts, creating new friends and brothers and sisters in the faith. So I'll leave that with you today. And challenge you to every morning, ask for those opportunities to witness. Father Yahweh, I pray that you, each one that's listening will look for those opportunities, those nuggets that you can bring into their lives to share, your, share their faith and share your kingdom with them. To bring about the amelioration of all of creation in our lives and in this area so that your kingdom can truly come to this generation that we would be faithful to, to seek out these opportunities and to rely upon your strength to follow through with them. We ask this in Yeshua's name, your precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sholiak. Commander. Great report. I affirm that for sure. As for th this revelation, and it being before me for years, I look at myself now and I think, who is this old guy? I think about so much that's been in the past and I'm getting tired of bringing it up, <laughs> telling the same stories. What is going on now? That's what I need to know for, from Yah. And that's what I may have got in this form in, uh, in the university. Of course, you're forced to right and it was good for me because I had the opportunity to be graded on a number of very difficult and foreign theological issues one of which was um, a type of teaching called creation spirituality and actually I believe, Marcel, you and I dis have discussed this to some extent back then at that time, but we would almost have considered the pioneers of that type of spirituality as New Agers. 
as though they were Christian in some respect they're, and held titles in the Christian church, their thinking processes went outward to the universe. And the only tools that they really had to utilize to think in that more ubiquitous fashion was those of philosophy and theosophy and Kabbalah and other um, semi-Hebrew types of coming to uh, greater understandings. And that is what pretty much turned me off to the movement or to actually becoming uh, creation spirituality, uh, spiritual leader. Ah, oh, gosh, let me try to get this together. So I had some experiences some time before, this was in the 80s, I suppose, that I saw on the property that I was living on uh, a wolverine. And that was in Indiana, and there are not supposed to be any there. And I wrote an essay about that for a creation spirituality test and grade. And what came of that was the concept of the ancient cosmic covenant. And the essay, taking it out and reading again after all those years, and analyzing the means by which these creation theologists came to the conclusion of how to remedy the cosmic situation of decay. Uh, I came to, to think now that, th that their ways can be replaced, that their mission, their universal mission, is valid and that in fact in a hebraic sense i believe i proved that through the paper using alternative sources you know hebraic sources judaistic even christian sources and now i'm thinking with brenda's help here what a, a gigantic mission this is to accomplish and just with a few people and the few people are not as aware of the cosmic repercussions of evil, I think, than some of us that have the time and spend the time studying and considering these things. So why couldn't we flesh out using the sources that we know now, that I didn't know then, a means by which we can do that, which Yahweh would have us to do with creation, that is, work alongside his spirit to restore everything, this being the time for sure, and make it available intellectually to more people, making it understandable to thinking believers rather than full of theological jargon and new age approaches to doing it and this has been before my face all this time in fact i think the yahad cultural idea i have which is completely foreign to me naturally comes out of learning about that movement. At the time, of course, I wrote the paper to make a grade, but now it's more and more birthing something within me and some other people that are in this movement. And we consider this jihad movement as a fulfillment of prophecy. When we read the prophecies about this and we understand that we're in the seventh millennium, and 
that nobody is really doing this except university people and philanthropists, but not anybody in Judaic or Hebraic or really Christian religions at all, which are totally focused on self, self-realization, uh, amelioration of personal problems and personal salvation. Brenda said, if it could be made simpler to understand in all the parts that we discussed of it, then maybe it could be grasped better by not only our community, but Christian community and perhaps even the Jewish community. That being made possible, you know, the gears in my mind started turning around. How could we do that? Well, I realized then that in that original essay, the cosmic creation essay, plus what we have been doing in the last few years in our discussions personally and as a corporate unit, the sources that we had discovered together can be applied to the outline of that essay to bring forth a product that is not only understandable, but will be accepted by the community of thinking believers. And even those, I mentioned last night, a, a bishop told me once, oh, you're, just remember, you're speaking to a, a crowd of simpletons. Even to simpletons in that respect, though, some of those simpletons might not have had the knowledge. They had the wisdom far beyond my years. And so you might think, well, is he thinking about just writing another book? It's going to be more than that if it comes to pass. We're going to need to have interaction about this. So we're going to have to talk about how we can make such uh, universal cosmic ideas more understandable. Yeah, so Alitsa talks about Gurdjieff or Gurdjieff. His ideas, though he wasn't a believer, I don't think, in the respect that we are, his ideas can be reframed, certainly by the use of the method that esoteric Christianity uses to interpret parables, to make things more understandable. And you know, at the very core of most of the Christian Enneagram materials. It's his work. In fact, he calls it the work. And certainly, uh, it's what I'm saying here, Elitza, is that this would have to be a product of a community consciousness, not just a couple people. And I've been thinking about this as to how we could present it to our group we are spiritual, we are an intelli uh, intelligentsia. We can do this together. And it seems like Yahweh has brought together in all this time just the ideal company to do it and to get it out to people so they can, they can go beyond their own personal problems and connect with Yahweh's real mission for uh, this cosmos. And that is to reverse the decadence that has ruined it since the, since the, interruption of his plan by evil. And it could even be that 
even that interruption was planned just so that we could finally come to this kind of realization and understanding at the time that was right. Last night we had a, a wonderful meeting and what was brought to my mind is the timing again. It's just not an ethereal concept that the seventh millennium is here. It is absolutely a foundational stone in the entire book of salvation history that's been set aside because of personal concerns on the part of the shepherds of Israel. Those shepherds, I'm afraid, are going to be judged on, on this and punished, uh, get great beatings because they've overlooked the fundamental program of the ages for something that is demonic, something that is ultimately and perfectly subjective, rather than that which benefits the big all that we call Echad. So to end this little talk, I want to make the material I have available to you as not a shark tank, but a think tank. Just us here. Let's put our minds together on this and first of all, decide if, there, decide if this is a mission worthy of our time. We've got all these other little components like the Earth Academy idea that we need to sharpen and make more uh, less idiocentric and more uh, and more people oriented. I think we can use that as a tool. And I certainly think what's been going on in the spiritual realm with some of us here is going to add a great deal to the appeal and the effectiveness of this particular mission, as well as we have some wonderful critics among our leaders and a little group of members, wonderful critics that will be honest, forthright, and also accurate on the actual text or program itself so as to close loopholes in our thinking. We've got to make it systematic in some way. And we also have to believe it. So if it's true, we need to convince ourselves. I will send the essay. The essay is much better to, to read and see the references than listen to the recording of it. And it's not very long. And it, I think that it, it's appealing, but think as you read it. And I'll send you what I talked about last night. It contains that too. As to how we can flesh it out in such a way that it can have the appeal that Yahweh needs in this next thousand years to fulfill that mission and as Barnabas says bring forth on the eighth day a new world amen I'll check check the chat <laughs>